Today I'm going to be watching this video, it's called Things You Should Absolutely Never Do in Canada. This was recommended by one of my viewers, so thanks for the recommendation, keep recommending more. Uh, yeah, tell me if these are things you shouldn't do in Canada, have you ever seen anybody do any of these? Uh, let's watch. Canada, the Great White North, the USA's northern neighbor is a popular tourist destination for many Americans, but it isn't the same as the states. Despite Canada's reputation for politeness, there are some buttons you don't want to push. Here are some things you should never do when you're in Canada. This is one of those things that should be obvious, but apparently it still needs to be said. If you go to Canada, do not make fun of the way they talk. Hey, what's up, ladies? Oh, you're from around these parts, eh? Yeah, I'm from Saskatchewan. What's up in Canada, eh? What movie when is that? When people put on a fake Canadian accent as a joke, it's not even an accurate accent. It's some antiquated and exaggerated version of how some Canadians might have spoken a long, long time ago. Additionally, one of the most commonly heard chestnuts is that Canadians say about instead of about. Could you tell us again what your argument is all about? This is not about diplomacy. This is about dignity. This is about respect. This is about realizing that here is. But if you listen to an actual Canadian talk for like five minutes, you'll notice that what they say is more like a boat and is actually, thanks to a linguistic shift called Canadian raising, much more complicated. So seriously, lay off the a boot stuff or you'll risk suffering the wrath of an angry Canadian. It might be yeah, tempting to think enough. of Canada as some kind of progressive wonderland where peace-loving northerners reach for the stars, immigrants are embraced and encouraged to paint their faces, and Americans are welcomed with open arms if an election doesn't go their way. <laughs> for those of you that think Canada is a mom and pop operation, it's time to wake up and smell the snow. However, as The Guardian points out, Canada has its share of issues, including the fact that it's the world's second largest arms dealer to the Middle East, its Albertan oil really? sands have a bigger carbon footprint than the entire state of California, and its intelligence agencies are allowed to torture prisoners in order to obtain information. These are definitely touchy topics. In short, it would be best to leave politics at home unless you're talking to someone you know well, or if you just want to hear someone completely lose it and go off Canadian style. I think that's like good advice no matter what country you go to is you just never really talk about the politics of that country. Like, I live in Malaysia, I've lived here for a long time. You would think that would give me the right to talk about politics, but I still don't even really want to go there with people because obviously politics is a very sensitive subject. Uh, I don't mind when people talk about British politics. I love it, actually, no matter whether it's neg or negative or positive, but that does. I guess you should never just expect the same from any other country, and I guess Canada probably is no different but tell me what you think about those uh, subjects if you want stop it okay <laughs> the united states largest city new york enjoys a certain kind of mythologized glamour among americans if you can make it there they say you can make it anywhere it's got some of america's best known landmarks many of its most famous cultural centers, and apparently some kind of magical water that, according to residents, allows the world's only good pizza and bagels to be made within its borders. It would be a mistake, however, to assume that Canada's largest city, Toronto, enjoys the same sort of reputation. In fact, generally speaking, outside Toronto, Canadians hate Toronto. Why? According really? to Vice, Toronto has a reputation as an arrogant and selfish city, which not only looks down on the rest of the country, but which has historically been privileged by the government at expense of less elite areas. Mm -hmm. Additionally, its cosmopolitan opinion of itself is not seen as earned, as the city suffers from crumbling infrastructure. So if you're outside Toronto, probably don't talk about how cool Toronto is, and definitely don't call it the capital. The capital Toronto. No. The capital of Canada is Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there are certain things that become so firmly embedded into a culture that they become part of a cultural identity and they will be fiercely defended from criticism from any and all outsiders. For Canadians, a major example of such a cultural institution is Tim Hortons, a beloved fast food chain famous for its coffee and donuts founded by and named after Hockey Hall of Famer Tim Horton. If you go I to Canada, under no circumstances should you disparage Tim Hortons. Canadians eat more donuts per capita than any other country in the world. Donuts are like currency there. Perhaps one of these would refresh your memory. Well. 
Canadians take Timmy's seriously. Do not talk trash about this cherished national icon. Sure, not every Canadian loves Timbits and a double-double, but they will tell you that privately, quietly, behind closed doors. If you don't have anything nice to say about Tim Hortons while in Canada, it's probably best that you don't say anything at all, or you might suffer a mysterious head injury. <laughs> Oh, there are a number of other cultural institutions, symbols, and traditions where national identity is so tied up in them that you should probably keep criticism to yourself. These include anything that involves maple syrup, progressive rock legends Rush, the sacred maple leaf, and of course, Canada's national pastime, hockey. While the U.S.-Canada border is often referred to as the longest undefended border in the world, that's really only true in the sense that it's not defended militarily. There are still civilian police and border security accounting for those coming in and out of each country, and while the relatively relaxed relationship between the two countries might lead you to believe that passage back and forth across the border will be a similarly relaxed affair, you should probably not underestimate border security. Despite Canada's reputation as a polite and apologetic culture, border security and customs agents are trained professionals, so be prepared for a serious conversation. When you're visiting the great white north of Canada, you got your can of do's and you got your can of don'ts. While it used to be true that a driver's license was sufficient identification to cross into Canada from the U.S., that is no longer the case. Nowadays, you absolutely must have a passport or equivalent, and in some cases, you might need additional paperwork, such as a travel visa or veterinary papers if you have any pets with you. Once you've crossed the border into the Great White North, keep up the good behavior, because the authorities will not hesitate to pull you over and ask you a few questions. So be prepared for anything. It's au bon pain chateau maman. Croque monsieur? Croque madame. <laughs> no. Croque madame. It's stupide. Frère Jacques Grey pour faux maquis de sa tourette et vous? Check Why out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about world culture. Or okay, that was pretty cool. So yeah, I definitely, I have no intention of doing any of them. Like, can it, all those things are like good things about Canada, but... Uh, what are all those clips from that look like so much cool Canadian movies and TV shows? Of course, I've seen like Trailer Park Boys uh, before, but some of the other shows look very funny, very good. Tell me if there was any good ones that I should watch there. Uh, and yeah, tell me what you think of, about the things on the list. I think, as I said, with these sort of lists, usually the things you think are quite common sense. You should just be like, when you go to a country, you should be respectful and not be rude for the sake of being rude. I think if you're just a nice person, you can get by most places okay. So these sort of things, like if anybody does them, I would be surprised. Not really that, but I guess there is people who would do them, but tell me if you've seen anybody that does any of them. Tell me if there's anything else you shouldn't do in Canada. Thanks.